Okay guys, welcome to the RAV4 Prime. And this is a 2023 XSE model, pretty much fully loaded around almost $52,000. And if you haven't checked out my full in-depth review video of the powertrain of the interior and exterior, definitely go check that out now. Otherwise, I'm gonna take you on a really quick tour of the exterior, just to get a little idea of what we're dealing with here. Now there are a lot of beeps and alerts on these Toyotas in modern days now, and they're really annoying. Here's another one. But um, it is a very safe vehicle, and nonetheless, it's a very cool looking vehicle. I think the RAV4 is aging pretty well. We have this duo tone paint finish with the silver and black. Kind of an aggressive front fascia. We got some decals around the side DRLs. It's like an Audi-esque light, like on the Q5 Leica LED lights. Full LED, of course. Our blue Toyota emblem. This one has 19 inch wheels. Kind of a cool red strut tower bit right there that's pretty interesting and that is kind of the theme of the prime you get that red badging on the back we have our roof racks that do make a little bit of wind noise on the highway i won't lie dual exhaust outlets we have a naturally aspirated four cylinder looks pretty fresh you get your red prime badge down here let's go places from toyota cool texas plate let's hop inside and take this thing for a drive now because it's pretty sweet like i said 302 ish horsepower too from this powertrain which is pretty decent nice interior nice seats Let's hop in and talk more about this powertrain because that is the real sweet spot of this vehicle. Let's buckle up and go on a drive. Okay, guys, RAV4 Prime 2023, 302 horsepower. We got an S mode for the CVT. Cool little dial down here. When you put it in sport mode, it kind of changes color, even in normal and eco. Sport mode's pretty cool. It just kind of gives you a little all that power in it constantly. All the power really comes in hybrid mode. You have an auto mode, but this one that can manually switch between hybrid and EV mode. And you can hold it to charge the battery. Automatic brake hold as well. But let's see what it feels like when you're kind of in all that power. 302 horsepower. Feels pretty peppy off the line. But at the end of the day, this is a family cruiser vehicle. It's supposed to be getting you the best fuel economy you can get. It's supposed to be getting you the most comfortable ride you can get. And does it achieve that? Well, I think it generally pretty much does. Now this is Toyota's TNGAK architecture, which is a on an endless amount of vehicles these days. And Toyota's really kind of the leaders in the hybrid vehicle technology. They have had endless amounts of iterations of their hybrid synergy drive powertrain over the years, decades almost even. And this is really the most refined version you can get in this plug-in hybrid form over here. And it's a cool one, it's an E all wheel drive system. So the rear wheels are powered by a small electric motor. The front wheels are powered by a naturally aspirated four cylinder and an electric motor sandwiched all together with that weird little CVT gearbox there. Hop into sport mode here. Spinning the front tires. <laughs> and you know, it's getting up the highway speeds there. Everyone's always calling this thing like, oh, this is a sort of high performance vehicle, but at the end of the day, it's not a high performance vehicle. This is actually a plug-in hybrid vehicle. It's a smooth vehicle, it's a comfortable vehicle, and it's not meant to be a type of performancey car in any way, shape, or possible. And I don't know why when people see a high horsepower number, they're like, oh, this has to be a sporty vehicle, but it's not. It's just enough decent amount of power to get you up to your highway speeds, to make you feel like you're not being sluggish going along. And this does that fantastically well. It doesn't throw you back in your seat. You know, if you really care, zero to 60 happens around five and a half seconds, but who's really doing that on a daily driving basis? Um, it's just a competent and really good powertrain. Now, if there are any complaints I'll have with this powertrain is that when the gas engine comes on sometimes, it may feel a little coarse when you're kind of stepping on it. It doesn't sound good for the gas engine, and especially when that um, EV battery is drained out and you're really just using that gas engine and using regen braking to charge the hybrid battery, it is a little bit coarser, and especially with the CVT drone. That's my really own complaint there, and I'm not gonna treat this like it's an aggressive sporty vehicle, because it's not. It's a smooth family cruiser with a very smooth and well-designed plug-in hybrid powertrain. And speaking of it, the whole fun about these plug-in hybrids to me really, on top of the driving experience, is controlling all the cool things you can do with them. Sure, you have all these fun modes. You have eco mode, normal mode, and sport mode. You even have a trail mode to kind of help distribute power better. And I love this energy flow graph in the infotainment system, where you can kind of see where all that power is going at all times, when you're regen braking and whatnot. 
but it's cool with these buttons here so if i put it in auto mode right now it will decide when it wants to be in ev mode and it wants to be in hybrid vehicle mode so right now it's in ev mode you can see with the little ev button on there you can see the battery is powering the front wheels right now if i floor it harder it's now powering all four wheels, which is really cool. Um, and remember, there's no physical like drive shaft connection between the front wheels and the rear wheels. Those kind of operate independently. That's exactly how Volvo systems actually work as well. Um, it's a really cool kind of system. Volvo systems are way more powerful and definitely have more power at the rear wheels. This is like almost like 60-ish horsepower at the rear wheels. So while you do have some power back there, it's not the most you're ever gonna get. Um, nonetheless, it is still a decent amount of power. And I also actually really like to drive it in hybrid mode too, because then it kind of just drives like a normal Prius. You're put putting along, you're cruising, and goes into EV mode. When you're regening, you can put it into charge, and you'll know, put some charge into the battery. As you can see what's happening right there. It's just fun to keep playing with these displays. And and if you really even want to, you could just put it into pure EV mode right now. So I'm gonna test off this line right here. We're gonna see what it does in pure EV mode. We have 24 miles of range right now, maxed out. I've actually only seen 40. I'd say say 42, and 40 is actually still pretty good. Another Rav4 right there. Look at that. Um, so we're in pure EV mode right now. Air conditioning's on, which could affect range a little bit. Straight foot to the floor off the line, and it doesn't kick into gas mode either. And as you can see, it's powering both the front and rear electric motors, which is really cool. So you always will have all-wheel drive too, even in EV mode, which I think is fantastic. That little stunt just cost us, oh, it didn't. From regening, we gained that right mile back, which is really cool. So yeah, this, this powertrain is fun to both drive and kind of play around with. I'm gonna pop it back into hybrid vehicle mode there and it can kind of decide what it wants to do but you can definitely drive this at ev mode all the time and on your left hand display over to your left side i'm gonna pop into sport mode get on the highway for you guys for a second <laughs> it has the power but it is not a performance vehicle whatsoever i call this power getting up the speed highway power and passing power it's not a performance kind of power and that's completely fine. Nonetheless, what I was getting distracted on, I wanna show you guys um, these cool displays on the left-hand side that will actually show you um, your kilowatt hour or kilowatt per mile score. Let me find if I can find that really quickly. Oh, it was here, it'll come up. You have an eco score, you have your total MPG. I've been doing around 32 MPG. It can do a lot better. I've just been driving it a little bit more um, spiritedly to kind of like get used to this powertrain stuff, but it will show you um, that range as well. And I like how it separates your gas range from your gas tank and your EV range on the separate side. And kind of combined, you get a really significant range of almost like 600 miles of range, which is absolutely crazy. Way more than an electric vehicle and way more than um, Toyota's own BZ4X EV, which only gets around 222 miles on fully electric mode. And I think this is honestly really better. It's quiet. It's just as quiet as the um, BZ4X as I've found inside. Um, it has a more traditional, obviously, interface and look. You can put gas in it if you need to. And of course, not everyone is fully ready to go pure EV just yet. On the highway right now, there is definitely some wind noise noticeable from those roof crossbars. You can detach those though, and that honestly may improve your range just a little bit um, as those will kind of remove, those will reduce um, your drag. But on the highway, it's very competent, very com comfortable. And I have to say this platform is a very refined platform from Toyota. You know, I was in a few Kias recently and the steering just felt so loose and like wiggly on the highways. It kind of felt a little dangerous, I'm not gonna lie. Um, this feels not sporty at all, but <laughs> it feels tighter. It feels more refined. It feels smooth. There's like, there's a lot of thought put into like every aspect of this vehicle. And Toyota's been perfecting the RAV4 formula for a long time now. And you can definitely notice that. Now, once we get onto the uh, highway up here, I'm gonna show you how their wonderful radar cruise control systems are working. You know, putting into sport mode, I'm just gonna show you what I mean by it's not sporty. This has a high center of gravity, this vehicle, and that doesn't always equal to any sort of sporty handling. And it's definitely very front wheel drive bias still with not much power going to the rear wheels. So there's a lot of body roll. It has a softer tune suspension. And like I said, that's getting off the speed power and just put it back into a eco or normal mode and you're just cruising along down on the highway. And like I said, this has Toyota's latest safety sense systems and they honestly work very, very well. There are a lot of beeps, I will say, um, to alert you about lane departure stuff and 
if there's vehicles around you and blind spot monitoring. I believe you can turn some of that off in the settings. They're a little bit finicky to kind of uh, go through in those menus up there. Though, nonetheless, they're not the worst thing on the planet and to activate them is super easy. So on your left hand side of the steering wheel, you just pop on radar cruise is now active. I can set my speed. Oh, look at that, that's it. And we're on. Um, I can adjust my speed with these little buttons right here. I can adjust my following distance, which unusually always defaults to the furth furthest following distance. I'm not sure how much I like that. Of course, we have blind spot monitoring over there as well. I think it's a pretty good system actually. It keeps you in the lanes very well. It does have lane centering assist, which is on, and you can disable that with the touch of a button as well. And I like that option. Not everyone wants to have that on actually. And yeah, it's a pretty quiet space on the interior. And I believe if you close this shade, that wind noise and those um that panoramic roof may disappear a little bit. Now you can see if you're not paying attention, it will beep at you and buzz at you to make sure you have your hands on the wheel. It is a force base force based system, not a capacitive touch system. So you gotta put some force into the wheel and make sure make sure it knows your hands are on the wheel at all times. And yeah, we're cruising in EV mode right now. Look at that. And we're actually putting energy back into the car on the highway just from cruising along. And that's, I think, is really, really cool. And again, that's where you're really going to be getting those maximum amounts of uh, fuel efficiency is on the highway and cruising because you can just shut that engine off, cruise in EV mode a little bit. If you need more power, the engine will kick right back on and you will be completely fine but it's just so comfortable in here. And like I said in my floor view, I love the easy access to all these big controls here. Super, super nice. I mean, you know, getting into a little bit of complaints. So maybe we could see some more modern stuff. And like I said, in my full review, this screen can get a little bit um, blocked out by glare and some bright sunlight conditions, especially during the daytime I have noticed. And you know, some of these menus are a little bit confusing to kind of go through. There's a lot of stuff going on here. It's a little bit cluttered. So if you don't like that, you can actually just kind of like make these screens kind of disappear like this um, to give you a little bit of like a pure driving screen and you don't want to look at all that stuff, but then you don't really have any of that useful information there. So a little bit of a trade-off for that. And navigating through these screens is, um, it's a learning curve, I'd like to say. Uh, <laughs> you do get used to it, but there's a lot of like different menus and like sub menus and layers to go through. And then like I said, it's okay, but I'd like to see that improved. And this invitation system is pretty much okay. It's very basic in its operation. These are all your menus right here. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is fantastic. So I can quickly access that right there. Takes up the whole screen, looks big, very big and chunky. The graphics aren't the best thing on the planet. It could be a little bit higher resolution, but again, it's a Toyota. Now I am only making a lot of these complaints because this particular model costs $52,000. And at $52,000, I may expect some higher resolution stuff. And of course you can't just go right into Lexus NX, which is essentially the same vehicle with the same powertrain, though way more luxurious inside. Um, that's a, it's getting a bit much for this particular vehicle. And I've repeated this a few times in my full review. You can get this car for $42,000 around that price with this powertrain without having to um, shell out these extra money. Look at that, we're in pure EV mode, gas engine kicks in, get more power, and off that and you're cruising right back into EV mode. Really cool stuff here. I'm gonna put that energy gauge back on for you guys because I just love looking at it. So yeah, I mean, as a daily driver, this thing's really fantastic and you truly can drive this in pure EV mode to and from work, to and from your daily commute. You know, the average person doesn't dr generally drive more than 40 miles to and from their average work commute. Uh, we have, uh, and that, that may kind of relieve some people if you wanna drive in electric mode and don't use gas, and, but you don't wanna have to worry about having an electric vehicle that only has 220 miles of range. When this runs out of EV mode, you can go straight into the gas tank and use all of that gas, charge your battery up, do whatever you want. but. I love this best of both worlds thing and these plug-in hybrids are getting so advanced quicker and quicker that I just think right now where we're living at with the poor um, full EV charging infrastructure with EVs having a lot of issues and still even though it's more widely adopted than it used to be it's still not accepted by everyone these plug-in hybrids are a great in-betweener and I think they are generally very good cars especially this RAV4 Prime. Now I do want to quickly mention some competitors. You have a 
Hyundai Tucson, I believe, plug-in hybrid. There's a, a Kia Sorento um, plug-in hybrid. There is the all-new Alfa Romeo Tonale, as well as the Dodge Hornet. Those both can be had as plug-in hybrids, and they all kind of compete in this similar plug-in hybrid crossover class, mainly, even if they are different sizes, mainly because there aren't that many still, and they are quickly being added to the market, but they all kind of interchangeably connect, um, kind of compete with each other. And this one still comes out on top, especially in terms of range and just longevity. Toyota is guaranteeing 150,000 miles um, that this uh, battery electric powertrain will last you. And that's the warranty. That's peace of mind there. I really do uh, appreciate Toyota, even though they have a great reputation for long-term reliability, even offering that um, warranty on top of it. So I'm really impressed with that. Linda, let's go. Nonetheless, guys, this is the 2023 RAV4 Prime, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what Toyota is going to be continuing to evolve with this powertrain. We know they have a new turbocharged engine with a plug-in hybrid, I think, coming as well soon. That's going to be interesting to see how that performs. Um, but this, this is the future, and I hope that manufacturers will understand that not everyone wants an EV, that we don't need to go pure EV, and that plug-in hybrids, gas engines can still exist. Maybe we'll see some hydrogen engines as well, but I think the diversity of powertrains is the future, and this vehicle really does help to prove it. Anyways, thank you for joining me yet again on another full review over at All Car News, as well as this PLV drive. And stay tuned, as per usual, for more coming from All Car News. Cheers.